So when it comes to dividend stocks, we all know that uh, energy companies, specifically oil and gas ones, tend to pay some very high dividend yields in order to attract investors to buying their stock. However, we also know that there's been a big shift lately, especially among governments and policymakers around the world, pushing much more heavily in favor of renewable energy instead of something like fossil fuels. I think the renewable energies market is supposed to surpass like $1.5 trillion in just a few years from now. Now, I know that this is a little bit of a controversial topic and everyone has their own opinion on it, but whether you agree or disagree with it, it's just the obvious trend that we're seeing right now is this big push for renewable energy, and I think that's only going to really accelerate into the future and over the long term. So personally, even though I do love dividend stocks and I would love to have some of those higher dividend yields from the oil and gas players, I'm just a little bit too afraid to invest in anything that is kind of fossil fuel related. So instead to kind of fill that energy dividend void in my portfolio, I don't really own anything that is kind of energy dividend related. I've been researching renewable energy dividend stocks lately. Now the drawback of these is that renewable energy stocks tend to trade for a premium because the market is hot, it's where the kind of the future is headed, and there's a lot of opportunity there. So their stocks tend to be a little bit more expensive, which means the dividend yields go down and they're nowhere near as high as some of the oil and gas ones. Um, so for that specific reason, for today's video, I'm gonna show you guys three stocks. I picked three that have actually dipped recently a little bit and that's left their dividends a little bit more attractive. And so the first stock, and by the way, these are actually my three favorite kind of renewable energy stocks at the moment based on the research I've been doing. But the first stock on the list uh, has a dividend yield of above 2%. I know that's a little low. I'm actually gonna show you a way that you can, uh, like an option for it where you could actually get it above 3%. And then the second stock does have a dividend yield of above 3%. And then the third stock has a dividend yield of above 5%, which is actually pretty high. Now, full disclosure, I do not personally own any of these stocks yet, but I almost certainly will be buying at least one of these very soon if not at least at some point during this year and uh, may actually even end up owning multiple. But as of right now, these are kind of my favorite. So I really want to share these with you guys. I'm excited to share them with you. I hope you guys enjoy the video. And by the way, let me know down below if there's any other kind of category of stocks that you would like me to look at next. This one is primarily focused on renewable energy dividend stocks. Let me know if there's any other kind of category you'd like me to do in a future video. But uh, with that said, let's go ahead and jump straight into this list because it's going to be a fun video and uh, I just want to get right into it. I hope you guys enjoyed. Hit the like button if you do. But let's start off with stock number one. Okay, so kicking things off here, we have what has long been a favorite of mine that I honestly constantly track and that is the largest utility company in the world in next era energy, ticker symbol NEE. -E. And because of that massive size and still impressive growth, which I'll show you in just a second, it's also been a very consistently stable stock that rarely ever dips, having already climbed by close to 150% in just the past five years alone. But thanks to a little dip there at the tail end of that five year run, they are currently trading in the $70 range, which leaves them just barely below the midpoint of their 52 week range, which is probably a really good price for such a strong performer with future promise. That dip also left their dividend at about 2%, which is admittedly low, but you should really look at Next Era as a dividend growth stock, more so than like a value one, as their payout ratio is pretty good at around 60% and carries a double digit growth rate of 12% and a very solid 26 years of not only paying that dividend, but actually growing it consistently as well. By the way, that's the longest uh, dividend growing history uh, of all the stocks on today's list. So it is pretty impressive. Now, if that yield is too low for you, I told you I would show you uh, something you could do with it. You could actually just go for one of their smaller subsidiaries instead called Next Era Energy Partners. Uh, ticker symbol is NEP instead of NEE, -E, which focuses more so on acquiring and managing energy projects, usually from their parent company, which is NEE. -E. And because, of, uh, because they fuel their growth through big acquisitions, they basically try to return the high cash 
cash flows to investors through dividends, which leaves them paying a higher yield than NEE at over 3.5%. So a very nice dividend yield there. I personally like both companies. Think you can't really go wrong with either one, but the parent's next era energy is a little less volatile and it's much larger and more diversified overall because they have so many subsidiaries and partnerships that I just feel they're a more kind of reliable long term bet. So I do prefer uh, NEE slightly over NEP. But to be completely honest, I really wouldn't mind owning either one of them since the trade-off with NEP is that you get a much larger dividend. So it just kind of depends on what you personally prefer. Uh, I'm going to be showing you some higher yields in just a second, though, with the other two stocks. So for now, we'll just stick with the much larger parent company that I do prefer a little more, and that's uh, Nexera Energy, ticker symbol NEE. And uh, when looking at their sales, those grew by a very nice 15% before the 2020 recession and are expected to recover again by double digits both this year and the next. Uh, that success, though, is due to Nexera being the largest producer of wind and solar energy in the entire world with over 45 gigawatts of net generating capacity, which I think is actually higher now. I believe they just reported that for 2020 it was almost 55 gigawatts. So that's like 10 gigawatts more than what is shown here. But anyway, that success has led to strong operating cash flows that they reinvest for more growth with over $50 billion planned investments in their American infrastructure through the next couple of years, leading them to being named one of the top 20 innovative companies in the world by fortune. They even have the number one ranking of most admired in the industry as well. Now, speaking of the industry, Next Era is mostly a utility company and they're not entirely based on renewable energy like solar and wind. In fact, solar only makes 10% of their capacity with wind at less than 30%, while natural gas is actually still the largest of all at pretty close to half of their entire capacity. But a couple of things on that. First of all, Natural gas actually has around half the emissions of other fossil fuels, so some still consider it fairly clean. And while I would love for their solar segment to be a lot larger, it does at least leave a lot of room for growth in the future. I've even seen some estimates that their backlog of projects will actually have more capacity than what they currently produce, which is pretty crazy considering how large they already are, and a lot of that will be high growth solar, which will also help them out a lot too as they transition more so towards just completely renewables. Now, that's also not to mention that being diversified like this is not necessarily a bad thing since natural gas will still be heavily used for a long time and they even have a lot of exposure to nuclear as well, which I think could be huge in the future if it's used correctly and as it becomes safer and more governments adopt it. So overall, there's a lot to like about Next Era, and I just think it'll be a solid choice for the future of energy as a whole and especially as a dividend growth stock. OK, now moving on to stock number two, though, if you don't like NEE or their subsidiary in NEP, there's actually another very solid dividend play in renewable energy that I think part of me is starting to like even more than Next Era. I mean, I, I think I really am. And that is Brookfield Renewable Partners, ticker symbol BEP, who is the subsidiary of another very large global asset management company known as Brookfield Asset Management, ticker symbol BAM. Now, BEP is their subsidiary that focuses solely on renewable energy, and they've already grown to be one of the largest players in the world. Currently, they operate over 5,000 renewable energy plants around the world world with over 20 gigawatts of energy generating capacity. So not quite as big as Next Era at about half their size when looking at capacity, but they're still definitely way up there among the largest. And they've also become one of the world leaders in hydroelectric power as over half of all their power generated is actually hydro. So if you're looking for more of a pure play or at least a bigger play on hydro, then this is this one is definitely a good choice considering that the hydroelectric market will grow to over $300 billion by 2026 according to Allied Markets Research. Of course, there will be larger growth in other areas like solar, but BEP is investing heavily into those other markets as well with a 27 gigawatt development plan that will consist of a growing share of solar. For context, that pipeline is even larger than what they currently have. 
Meanwhile, wind makes up the second largest at 22%, solar the third largest at 16%, and other sources, probably not renewable, only make up 10%. So that's much smaller than the nearly half portion that you saw with something like Nextera. And with those future developments, BEP should see some very nice growth despite having already performed so well over the past decade already. Now, stick with me for a second because this might get a little complicated, but when looking at cash flows, the best metric to use for a company like this is using their funds from operations or otherwise known as FFO. And over the past decade, they grew their FFO by more than 10% a year. And looking forward every year through 20 2025, they estimate that their FFO will increase by up to 2% from inflation on existing contracts, up to 4% from improving margins, up to 5% from all of those development expansions that we already talked about, and another up to 9% from future acquisitions. Add it all up, and it should be even higher growth than what they experienced in the past. I mean, we could be talking about super high growth here, anywhere from like 15 to 20% a year. That's very high. Which, by the way, that would perfectly cover their targets for growing their dividend at around 5 to 9% a year as well. And thanks to a recent dip similar to Next Era's that left their stock around the midpoint of the 52 week range, BEP's current dividend yield is pretty attractive at about 3.2%. By the way, I wouldn't worry about that growth history only being zero years. When you adjust for a stock split, I think they've actually grown it every year for the past decade or so. Anyway, like Next Era, this is another stock that I'm getting very excited about myself, and I think I, I think I might even be starting to prefer it overall, just because of that higher exposure to renewables in their portfolio, the very solid growth, and the very nice dividend yield as well. Again, dividend yield higher than uh, Next Era Energy. But that, of course, leaves us with the last stock on the list. And if none of the previous ones had a high enough yield for you, then look out for this one because their yield is very high at above 5%. So this should be really fun to take a look at here. And that company is Clearway Energy, ticker symbol CWEN. And this is another big player in the renewable energy space, but they're also a lot smaller than something like NextEra or BP because Clearway is mostly just in the United States, whereas the others are global companies. So maybe it's a little riskier in that sense, but they still generate a decent amount of renewable energy, especially just here in the United States with over a gigawatt of solar and three gigawatts of wind, along with some natural gas and thermal energy as well. For context, this makes them the 11th largest wind producer in the US and the 9th largest of solar for a total of over 8 gigawatts of energy generation across all their different platforms. But like other stocks we talked about, Clearway is yet another subsidiary of a larger corporation, in this case of Global Infrastructure Partners, which controls over 12 gigawatts of renewable energy. And that adds a little more security to it, just knowing that they have that big backing of a larger company like that. Not to mention that Clearway also sells their electricity primarily through long-term contracts. I think the average is like 13 years, meaning that their cash flows are usually pretty stable and that along with a 10 gigawatt pipeline of development through their partnership with Clearway Group means that they can pay a reliable dividend that they are aiming to keep growing at around 5 to 8% a year. And thanks to their most recent dip in the stock price, that leaves them down almost 15% this year and below the midpoint of their 52-week range, and it leaves their dividend looking very attractive right now at over 5% yield. Although the payout ratio is a little high, and I think they did actually lower it once in the past, although they have actually uh, technically paid it for many years. But either way though, what you basically get here is a much higher yield than the others, but that yield also comes with some added risk. Still, if you're looking for a more pure play on the US renewable energy market, then this is a pretty good choice considering that solar makes up a very nice chunk of their sales at around 31% of their cash available for distribution, which uh, is tied for their largest. And the new pipeline should increase that even further over time. This, by the way, gives them the largest proportional exposure to solar than any other company on today's list, although it's important to also note that they do have pretty heavy exposure to natural gas as well at almost 30%. So you kind of have to take the good with the bad here. Still, there's a lot of good to like here, and that's especially considering that right now the United States is pretty much controlled entirely by Democrats who extremely believe in the whole climate change movement or agenda, and they'll be pushing for very high renewable energy spending. In fact, Biden's massive $1.5 trillion budget proposal for just next year alone in 2022 
will include a nearly 30% increase in clean energy spending and Democrats' new $3.5 trillion proposal that is estimated to actually top $5 trillion over the next decade by independent anal analysis uh, is said to even include big fines and penalties for companies that don't go green and big tax breaks and rewards for those that do, including clean energy producers. So there's going to be massive opportunity for renewable energy in the United States especially. So the way I see it, all of the companies on today's list have very solid future potential and very attractive dividends to go along with them. It just really depends on what you prefer more. Are you looking more for the size and kind of safety and reliability of something like a Next Era or a Brookfield, um, but also get a smaller dividend in return? Or do you take a chance on something that is a little bit riskier, a uh, much smaller, more US focused company that gives you a much higher yield in return with something like Clearway? Personally, I like all of them. I don't really think I could go wrong with any of these stocks on today's list, but I think Brookfield has the best compromises of all three with the lower exposure to non-renewables, the solid growth, and the very nice dividend of over 3%. So that's the stock that I think I like the most as of right now. Then I would probably go with Next Era for their massive size, and then Clearway would be my third choice because it does feel a little bit riskier, although that dividend yield of over 5% is very attractive. But again, Brookfield, Looks like the stock that I'm probably going to be buying soon. I personally really like it. But let me know down below if you agree with my thoughts or if there's any other stocks that you would have thrown in instead of any of these. I'd love to hear your thoughts down there as well. Uh, make sure you hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I really appreciate all the support. We'll catch you guys in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.